Hi everyone, I'm Phil Williams from Liverpool Astronomical Society and thanks for joining me for this talk. The title of my talk is The Brief and Brilliant Life of Jeremiah Horrocks and the talk will tell the fascinating story of a Liverpool lad done good. Amongst the many historic firsts attributed to the sons and daughters of Liverpool, which are listed here in huge letters on the towering wall in Liverpool Central Library, are the words Transit of Venus. Behind these three words lies the story of a young man from early 17th century Liverpool who shook the astronomy world with his detailed astronomical observation and accurate predictions of the positions of the moon stars and planets. Jeremiah is regarded as the father of British astronomy and this is his story. Jeremiah was born in Toxteth Park, Otterspool in Liverpool. The exact date of his birth is unknown but archive documents indicate he was born either 1618 or 1619 and he died on the 3rd of January 1641 at just 22 years of age. As I mentioned in the introduction, Jeremiah is widely regarded as the father of British astronomy and his astronomical achievements link aspects of the work of Galileo to those of Isaac Newton. His most notable astronomical achievements are as follows. He significantly improved Kepler's astronomical tables, enabling more accurate prediction of the positions of the moon, stars and planets. He recognised that both the sun and earth influenced the orbit of the moon, and Isaac Newton acknowledged his work in his renowned publication Principia, which was first published in 1687, and considered one of the most important works in the history of science dealing with his laws of motion and universal gravitation. This is an image of the front cover of Newton's Principia in which Jeremiah's work is acknowledged. Jeremiah was also the first to demonstrate that the moon moved in an elliptical orbit around the Earth. As can be seen in this diagram, which greatly exaggerates the elliptical nature of the lunar orbit, at perigee, the distance between the Earth and Moon is approximately 362,000 kilometres, and at apogee, approximately 405,000 kilometres. Jeremiah's most notable achievement was being the first person to accurately predict, observe and record the transit of Venus. He observed the transit on the 24th of November 1639, which equates to December the 4th using the modern day calendar. He observed the transit from the village of Much Hool in Lancashire. Such transits occur when Venus passes directly between the Earth and Sun. Transits of Venus are among the rarest of predictable astronomical phenomena. They occur in a pattern that generally repeats with pairs of transits eight years apart, separated by long gaps, of between 105 and 120 years. This diagram demonstrates the geometry of Venusian transits and as can be seen the observed path of the transit depends on the location of the observer. This is a recording of the observation of the most recent transit of Venus in June 2012. Cloud masked the very start of the transit from the observing site on this occasion. This short diagrammatic video was prepared by HM Nautical Almanac Office and shows the path of the 1639 Venusian transit, which was observed by Jeremiah. This image shows the relative sizes of the sun and planets. 
Transits of Venus occur due to the orbital paths of the planets and the relative positions of the Earth and Venus within the solar system. The planets are shown in order, with Venus and Earth, of course, the second and third planets from the Sun. This slide shows a size comparison of Venus and Earth using a radar image of Venus from NASA's Magellan probe and Earth taken during the Apollo 17 mission. I'd now like to consider the main sources of information available to us on Jeremiah's life and work. His early death and the chaos of the English Civil War resulted in the loss of much of the documentation relating to Jeremiah's work. But there are three very significant sources which provide detailed relevant information. The first is a quantity of letters exchanged between Jeremiah and his close friend William Crabtree, a notable Salford-born astronomer. The second and very significant source is a treatise entitled Venus in Sole Visa, which translates as Venus seen on the sun. The treatise was published in 1662, 21 years after Jeremiah's death by the acclaimed Polish astronomer, Johannes Hevelius. It was written in Latin, and was the, as was the standard practice for published scientific documents at the time, and was subsequently translated into English. Venus in Sole Visa is essentially a detailed account of Jeremiah's observation of the 1639 transit, using copies of his original documents. A copy of the text of the treatise is held in the Liverpool Central Library archive, where it is securely stored under carefully controlled environmental conditions to facilitate preservation of the volume. Access to the document is restricted and closely supervised, and specific rules govern the handling of the volume itself. Myself and my wife were permitted access to the volume as an arranged visit to the library last year. This is the front page of the treaties, which is considered to be not only the account of an important astronomical observation, but also an analysis and commentary on the changing world of astronomy during the significant period between the scientific achievements of Galileo and Isaac Newton. The text also presented Horrocks' enthusiastic and romantic nature including humorous comments and original poetry. I particularly love the poetic words he used to describe the period of over a century between pairs of Venusian transits when he wrote, Thy return, posterity shall witness, years must roll away. But then at length, the splendid sight again shall greet our distant children's eyes. In scientific terms, this diagram of Jeremiah's observation contained within the treaties provides the key information about the transit itself. In describing his observations, Jeremiah wrote, I beheld a most agreeable spectacle, the object of my sanguine wishes, a spot of unusual magnitude and of a perfectly circular shape which had already fully centred upon the sun's disk on the left, so that the limbs of the sun and Venus precisely coincided, forming an angle of contact. Not doubting that this was really the shadow of the planet, I immediately applied myself sedulously to observe it. Horrocks could only watch for approximately another 30 minutes before the sun set, but it was long enough for him to make his observations and calculations which are recorded in the treaties. The third and equally important source of information about Jeremiah's work is a book entitled Opera Posthuma, which translates as posthumous works and is a compilation of documents which constitute the bulk of Jeremiah's scientific work 
other than those relating to the transit of Venus, which had already been published by Avelius. Opera Postuma was published by the Royal Society in 1672. As with Venus in Sole Visa, a copy of Opera Postuma is also held in the Liverpool Central Library Archive. And again, we were privileged to obtain permission to examine the book, which is shown here. This is a photo of the front page of Opera Postuma. So the three sources of information I have referred to, namely the letters exchanged between Jeremiah and William Crabtree, the treatise Venus in Sola Visa and Opera Postuma, provided the vast majority of information we have available about Jeremiah. I'd now like to take you on a tour of the significant locations that feature in Jeremiah's story using a collection of images and photographs. The photographs of various locations in Liverpool and Much Hool were taken when we visited them on a number of occasions during 2019. Jeremiah is thought to have been born at Lower Lodge, Toxteth Park, Otterspool. He was born to a family of comparatively modest means. This is a photograph of a watercolour drawing of Lower Lodge drawn in 1862, inscribed with the words, birthplace of Jeremiah Horrocks, Otterspool, Toxton Park. It was drawn just prior to the demolition of the building and subsequent construction of Otterspool Railway Station on the site, which itself closed in 1951. His family were English Protestant Puritans, living within a community of Puritans that had become established in the area. The Puritan community funded and built a chapel for worship, which was opened in 1618, around the time of Jeremiah's birth. The chapel exists today as the ancient chapel of Toxteth, shown in this photo. Jeremiah was taught by the first minister of the chapel, Richard Mather and the congregation erected a stone tablet at the chapel to mark the 300 year anniversary of the chapel and acknowledging the ministry of Mother. Jeremiah proved to be a keen and exceptional young student and supported by his family and members of the community, he applied for and was accepted as a sizer at Emmanuel College, Cambridge in 1632. Sizers were students who undertook manual work at the university to help fund their studies. During this time at the university, his interest in astronomy developed significantly. Records indicate that he left Cambridge in 1635 without graduating and returned to his home in Liverpool. The reasons for his failure to graduate are unclear, but it has been specula speculated that they may have been financial in nature. In June 1639, Jeremiah moved to the village of Much Hool near Preston and was employed by the Stones family as a tutor to their children here at Carr House. They were a wealthy family of merchants and farmers and it was while lodging with the family that Jeremiah observed the transit from Carr House on the 24th of November 1639. This plaque was erected by Chorley Civic Society at Carr House to commemorate the great event. Whilst living at Carr House, Jeremiah undertook clerical duties at St Michael's Church in the village, including assisting at services and performing Bible readings. The church has become somewhat of a shrine to his memory and contains many features dedicated to his work, and particularly in celebration of his observation of the transit. There is a vertical sundial on the church tower installed to mark the first of the two 19th century transits. It is inscribed with the Horrocks quote, 
sine sole silio. Without the sun, I am silent. On the top of the tower, there is a weather vane which was erected in celebration of the 2012 transit. Here is a close up of the weather vane, and as you can see, the varying positions of Venus during the transit are shown. A number of stained glass windows in the church are dedicated to Jeremiah, including the top and bottom in the central pane here. This window depicts Jeremiah as he observed the transit. The Latin is taken from Venus and Sole Visa and translates as, Oh, most grateful spectacle, the realization of so many ardent desires. This window was installed to celebrate the 2004 transit and lists the date of all the previously observed transits of Venus. This statuette stands on a plinth of the church and depicts Jeremiah measuring astronomical angles using a radius astronomicus, an instrument he designed and constructed. Also on the plinth is a photograph of the memorial to Jeremiah at Westminster Abbey, erected in 1874 after a petition by the Royal Astronomical Society. The memorial was positioned facing the statue of Isaac Newton at the Abbey. So as you can see, this beautiful church has indeed become a shrine to Jeremiah and his observation of the transit and is well worth a visit. Jeremiah left Car House and returned to Liverpool in May 1640 and worshipped once more at the ancient chapel of Toxton. Tragically, he died within a year of his return. The circumstances of his death are unknown. There is a plaque dedicated to his memory on the wall of the ancient chapel in Toxton. This is a photograph of the plaque. The inscription reads, This tablet is erected to the memory of Jeremiah Horrocks, who foretold and was the first to observe the transit of Venus across the sun's disk on the 24th of November, 1639. He also made other valuable discoveries in astronomy. He was born in Toxteth Park near Otterspool about 1618 and died there on the 3rd of January 1641. It is believed that before going to Cambridge he was a pupil of the Reverend Richard Mather, the first minister of this chapel, and that within its precincts he was buried. This is the cemetery in the grounds of the ancient chapel of Toxteth, but sadly there are no memorials to Jeremiah and no documentation has been found relating to his death or burial. A sculpture celebrating the life and works of Jeremiah was installed at the Pierhead in Liverpool in 2011, in time for the most recent transit in 2012. Sculpture is in the form of a large telescope pointing the heavens and was designed incorporating a hand-powered mechanical orrery. The position of Venus is replaced by a copper angel representing Jeremiah. The base is inscribed with the words of the poem I read earlier from his treatise Venus in Sole Visa. In November 2019, a campaign was launched to raise funds for a full size statue of Jeremiah. The launch of the campaign was held at Liverpool Central Library. A number of notable enthusiastic supporters of the initiative spoke at the campaign launch, including Chairman of the Society for the History of Astronomy, Gerard Gilligan, Dr. Michaela Mitchell of Liverpool Life Science University Technical College, author Frank Cottrell Boyce, and the sculptor, Philip Garrett. The keynote speaker at the event was Dr. Alan Chapman of Wadham College, Oxford, President of the Society for the History of Astronomy. Dr Chapman is photographed here at the event 
with a statuette of Jeremiah using his radius astronomicus. To quote Dr. Chapman, Horrocks was the Einstein of the early 17th century, a schoolboy genius who would have achieved so much more had he lived to his old age. I introduced this talk referring to the historic firsts attributed to the sons and daughters of Liverpool, which are listed on this towering wall in Liverpool Central Library, including the words Transit of Venus. Having heard about Jeremiah's life and work, I am sure you will agree that behind these three words there does indeed lie the story of a young man from early 17th century Liverpool who shook the astronomy world and is rightly regarded as the father of British astronomy. I hope you enjoyed the talk and thank you for listening.